Telco CTOs are tasked with building networks that are not only optimized for today's traffic, but are future-proofed for deploying the workloads of tomorrow. Joining me now from Boston is Chris Wright, SVP and CTO of Red Hat. Chris, very good to talk to you again. Good to see you, Guy. What are some of the challenges facing your fellow CTOs in the telecom sector and which are no doubt keeping them up at night? Well, I think the, the, the core challenge is modernizing the network. And you know, we've heard a lot about uh, bringing network transformation to the commu communication service providers. What that means, I think, is uh, one, improving the costs of building the network. So it's cost reduction, both operational cost reduction and where, where possible uh, capital cost reduction, and improving their ability to introduce new services and new forms of revenue. And so in the end, that's about redefining the network uh, to move away from the traditional network, which is built from hardware appliances, vertically integrated with management solutions, and, and more move towards uh, a more software-defined platform infrastructure to give them that cost reduction and that ability to move quickly. Because we, we all know the the amount of data flowing through the network is increasing. The ARPU is not not exactly. Um, and so the demands are continually increasing. 5G is on the horizon. They've got to really be prepared for all of these changes. You mentioned 5G is on the horizon there. So, so how do you go about building a network for what's yet to come? Well, I, th I think it really starts from a technology platform point of view. And so the, the transition that I'm seeing that's, that's really helping the operators move into this next generation of, of networking is starting with a, a, co a common horizontal platform. So instead of having these uh, vertical solutions that are, you know, whether it's a specific EPC or, or IMS or uh, other different network functions, building a common platform, a cloud type platform, uh, and that horizontal platform becomes the target to onboard applications to. So you get some operational efficiencies with consistency at the platform level, but similarly integration into top level orchestration uh, with consistency. And then you have a common target for the ecosystem to build around to really uh, improve the overall uh, cost of building the network. Now, transformation is ongoing and it just it doesn't just stop at virtualization. Can you share any observations of your customers on this journey and this overall evolution from OpenStack, NFE, and towards containers? Well, I think if you, if you look forward in the fullness of time, containers as a technology solution become a really excellent way of encapsulating the content of an application and managing the application lifecycle and, and the relationships between the different portions of the application uh, with software-defined tooling, essentially automation APIs. That is not where we are today. Today, we're really working with uh, virtualization. And virtual, we've, we've talked a lot about networks function virtualization. And that, that virtualizing of a network function really has started with take the physical appliance and move it to a virtual appliance. Uh, there's a whole nother wave that we'll need to work through across the industry of containerizing those network functions. And that's a, that, I think that's a long-term destination. Uh, it's, today, we're still really building out uh, core networks with virtualization and even extending that out of the core and, and, and out to the edge. So what are some of the key factors that CTOs need to consider when choosing vertically integrated technology versus standardizing on a common horizontal platform? Well, I think there's cost is one key factor. Um, another key factor are the skills of your, of your workforce. And so there's a real benefit, in my opinion, to building a common platform and onboarding solutions onto that platform. There is a trade-off associated with that, which is when you have a vertically integrated solution, that means somebody has taken care of that vertical integration. Uh, when you have a horizontal platform and you're doing onboarding and you're integrating network functions, not just to the platform, but also to your orchestration systems, uh, there's, there's real work that has to be done there. So, um, you know, I think 
the value that comes with that horizontal platform is consistency. Your operations teams have a common platform that they're looking at rather than a set of sort of siloed solutions. Uh, but again, nothing is free. So we have to look at where does that integration come from and who do you partner with? Is that something you do in-house? Is that something you do through a partner? Um, I think the overall picture is really building a platform that enables the technology to and, and the, the applications to evolve. And as you have the, the more vertically integrated you have uh, a solution stack, the ch more challenging it is to move and, and evolve that, that solution stack or integrate with other new interesting parts of your application portfolio. And what would you say are the key problems that CTOs would, are looking to solve when they deploy um, a horizontal technology strategy? Well, I think the, the, the temptation of a vertical stack is the simplicity. It just comes out of the box, you turn it on, it's turnkey solution. Um, the challenge is when you sort of lather, rinse, repeat across multiple vertical solutions, you've actually introduced a different type of complexity. So I think the real um, problem that we're looking to solve is a complexity problem. And the complexity problem I think is solved by having that consistency. It's a consistent operational view of your network uh, all the way from the platform up through the applications and into the orchestration, service orchestration level. I wonder if also we, we could touch on um, some of the use cases that are affecting telcos at the moment. Um, you know, for example, a true horizontal telco cloud that can, can, that can enable virtual RAN. We're seeing a lot of interest in, in virtual RAN at the moment. How, how does this fit? Well, I think the industry started with the core of the network and we've made a lot of progress. But that's only one portion of the of the network, and and if you look at it, maybe from a service provider point of view, overall spend, uh, it's not it's not the entirety of the spend by any stretch of the imagination. What we're seeing today is stretching that that conceptual platform, and I use the word conceptual on purpose. I'll touch back on that in a moment. Uh, from the core out to the edge, and again, it's the consistency of operations that really matters. And as you get out to the edge of the network and you're looking at the radio access portion of your network, uh, we're able to do the same type of virtualization, bring, bring a function onto a cloud platform uh, that we've done in the core. The conceptual part of the consistent common horizontal platform is we're not talking about literally one physical cloud. You know, we have different physical clusters deployed in different locations. Uh, certainly, that becomes pretty obvious when you talk about the access part of a network, but that consistency of the common platform, the operational model associated with that platform, the ecosystem targeting a common way to onboard applications and, and get uh, integration into to management and orchestration, that is really the benefit. And I think we saw that clearly in, in the core of the network. Uh, and as we extend it out to the edge, we're seeing pretty substantial cost savings, 20, 30 plus percent cost savings of managing and, and building these, these what I would call next generation networks. Maybe another important point is all of this is a prerequisite for building a 5G network. You have a much more service oriented uh, description from uh, 3GPP and the standards bodies and building out a network from software defined infrastructure is really, in my, in my view, and, and, and I'm not alone in this, uh, a prerequisite for getting to 5G. So this is, we talked a lot about NFV. I think the NFV conversation has um, quieted in, in favor of talking about 5G. That doesn't mean NFV's gone away. It's just we're more comfortable with it. We understand it more, and it becomes a fundamental building block to the next generation network. And should CTOs also be open to learning best practices from adjacent industries? Uh, I think that's a great question. Uh, in my opinion, absolutely. Uh, if you look at what modern uh, businesses are doing across the board, not just telecommunications, they're really reinventing themselves around uh, cloud platforms and automation, DevOps. There's a technology shift as well as a cultural shift. There is a lot to learn from the operational efficiencies and the agility that comes along with those changes that we see in other, in other areas of the, uh, of the market. We're building platforms and open source communities that address a broad set of use cases, taking advantage of those platforms and adding the functionality that's specific to the telco industry, I believe is the best path forward. And I think we have a lot to learn uh, on the network side from uh, businesses that are, that are further ahead in terms of virtualization and, uh, and automation and, and cloud computing. Chris, great to have your insight and thanks very much for joining us today. Absolutely, thank you, Guy.